Hey, what is going on guys? So today is going to be a slightly different video from my normal videos and a video that I've wanted to make for a long time now. But before we get to it, I gotta say, I have been growing out the beard and it's partially been for, you know, just personal experimental reasons, but also to appear higher testosterone to the, you know, toxically masculine pro meat people. So from an aesthetic reason, let me know what you guys think. And also if you think it makes sense to do this to, you know, impress these high testosterone uh, carnivore pro meat people that, you know, might need to see a more full beard to be convinced of a point. Also, recent stats do indicate that around 40% of you still aren't subscribed, but continue to regularly watch the channel. So just fucking subscribe, please. Thank you. Alrighty. So we're going to be covering today what many call the vegan SpongeBob episode. Just gotta say that if you're somebody who watched SpongeBob as a kid, and you haven't given it a chance as an adult, trust me, you're missing out. The show was practically made for adults and nobody really realized it. So if you haven't watched it as an adult, I strongly implore you to do so. It's just funny as f Anyway, I'm not 100% sure what amount of the episode I can show in video format without getting copyright claimed. So I'm likely just gonna show different clips here and there as well as screenshots. So we're going to cover the Jellyfish Hunter episode, which clearly depicts a message against factory farming and does this in the form of showing jellyfish being factory farmed for their jelly. Now let's not forget, humanely raised and locally exploited jellyfish would also be unethical according to vegan principles, given that if these farms followed the same rules as dairy farms today, jellyfish would eventually be killed off once they can no longer produce jelly at a cost-effective rate for the jellyfish farmer. This would be a very similar process to dairy farms. So let's start with the beginning of the episode. The beginning of the episode starts with SpongeBob going around hunting jellyfish in the same way that human beings hunt animals. Upon capturing a jellyfish, seemingly humanely, SpongeBob ends up tickling the jellyfish in order to get them to squeeze out jelly. At the surface, this seemed like a mutually agreed upon exchange up until the jellyfish ended up actually stinging SpongeBob on his face, displaying a clear lack of desire to be jellied in the same way that cows today are milked. Bye, Twelvey. He also called the jellyfish Twelvey, indicating this is probably the 12th jellyfish he's exploited. This hypothesis is only further confirmed when he comes across a more uniquely colored jellyfish that was blue instead of the usual pinkish purplish jellyfish you'll see in the show. He ended up saying that he's caught and named every jellyfish in Jellyfish Field, except for this one. This kind of reminds me of hunters today trying to hunt down the rarest of animals who possess a unique kind of phenotype. I will say that at some point, the blue jellyfish says to SpongeBob, quote, bring it on, indicating a kind of consent to competition or, you know, consenting for SpongeBob to go ahead and try to capture them. But let's be honest, that's not how it works in the real world, right? This is somewhat related to how people will give hunters shit for calling hunting a sport when normally, when it comes to a sport that contains more than one person, all participants are willing participants and consent to the sport. Whereas in the case of hunting, the animals that are shot are not willing participants. Who knew that animals that are hunted are not willing to get shot in the face? Well, it's just you and me again. I've caught and named every jellyfish in this field at least once, except you, no name. A little later in the episode, we end up in the Krusty Krab, where SpongeBob works. If you don't watch SpongeBob, just gonna clear that up. And SpongeBob gets told that he has only five minutes for his lunch break, and in exciting fashion says, yay, that's one more minute than yesterday. The implication here is that his boss, Mr. Krabs, is a greedy person who doesn't give his employees a reasonable amount of time to take a lunch break. Mr. Krabs also says you only have five minutes while literally counting his money earned from that day. This is somewhat relevant to the episode because as you'll see later, Mr. Krabs is the one who fully initiates the process of factory farming the jellyfish for their jelly. I'm going on my lunch break, Mr. Krabs. You got five minutes. Wow, one more minute than yesterday. So during SpongeBob's lunch break, he uses jellyfish jelly on a Krabby Patty and people around him are kind of shocked and they're just like, whoa, like what is that? And there's this one dude who ends up saying like, what the fuck is that? And he doesn't say what the fuck, it's obviously a kid's show, but he's like, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's a, you know, Krabby Patty with Jellyfish Jelly. He's like, let me try it. He ends up trying it. He completely just falls in love with it. He started sharing it around to everybody in the restaurant and everybody was liking it as well. And everybody was just, you know, 
overcame with the taste pleasure they were deriving from consuming the jelly. Kind of like people with, you know, cheese nowadays. They were like, oh my God, this is so good without actually understanding how the jelly came to them in the first place, which obviously in this case was SpongeBob grabbing a jellyfish and tickling them against their will and causing them to excrete jelly from their uh, jellyfish bodies. Mr. Krabs at first is upset to see what SpongeBob is doing and views what he's doing as a kind of tainting of the Krabby Patty formula, which is the main burger that is used at the Krusty Krab. But once that dude told Mr. Krabs that he loved the jelly on the patty and that he's gonna be coming to the Krusty Krab for lunch every day for the rest of his life, Mr. Krabs is immediately just like, oh my God, like I can get a profit from this. And he even tells SpongeBob, SpongeBob, I need you to go ahead and grab some more of those money fish. He calls them money fish, not even jellyfish. Indicating that he, you know, sees these jellyfish as a mere commodity, similar to farmers today and other people who sell animal products. SpongeBob, I got a proposition for you. How's about you go catch me some of those little money fish? So he tells SpongeBob to go ahead and hunt some more jellyfish. It's also kind of interesting how Mr. Krabs just saw this small instance of jelly and then realized how much of a profit he can make. This is kind of a vague connection, but for people who know the drama around backyard eggs and why we probably shouldn't promote them, it's similar to how, you know, although you can get maybe your backyard eggs from a more ethical source, like somebody who isn't breeding, uh, you know, laying hens or whatever, but instead they just have like this egg that's a byproduct of existence, somebody could still see that egg and be like, huh, that tasted really good. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and start paying for jellyfish or in the case of real life, you know, hens to be bred and I'm going to start making a profit from them, which in turn might lead to somebody creating a factory farm like Mr. Krabs does in this episode with jellyfish. Also, just a side note because I find this shit funny. After being asked to go catch more jellyfish for Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob gets excited and says, oh my God, I've always wanted to get paid to jellyfish. That's my dream. And then Mr. Krabs says, keep dreaming. The hunting will be on your own time. This is just more evidence of how fucking greedy Mr. Krabs is. And it's even funnier when you consider how much Mr. Krabs requests SpongeBob to jellyfish, which we'll be seeing shortly. Oh boy, getting paid to jellyfish. That's my life's dream. Well, keep dreaming. This will be on your time. Hi, aye, aye, sir. Now go get me some jellyfish. So after SpongeBob understands his mission, he instantly comes back with a singular jellyfish. Mr. Krabs says, SpongeBob, we're going to need way more than one jellyfish. He asks, how many do we need? Mr. Krabs goes on to say, we have an entire ecosystem. He uses the word ecosystem of hungry paying customers and then begins to guilt trip SpongeBob saying, oh my God, don't tell me you don't care anymore about the customers, to which SpongeBob says, oh no, of course not. I do care about the customers, blah, blah, blah. This sort of reminded me of farmers today convincing themselves that their job, purely based in exploitation and murder, is some kind of good deed for the people, when in reality, yes, it does serve some people, but only at the expense of the lives and autonomy of sentient beings who have no say in the matter. So before SpongeBob ends up going ahead and hunting more jellyfish, he does tell Mr. Krabs to keep that one singular jellyfish that he gave Mr. Krabs in a safe place because jellyfish are quote, oh so sensitive, alluding to the sentience of farm animals today and how they clearly experience pain. And Mr. Krabs greedily responds, oh yeah, I'll keep them safe in me wallet. Okay, Mr. Krabs, just make sure the jellyfish are comfortable. They are oh so sensitive. Ooh, I'll keep him comfortable, all right. Inside me wallet. <laughs> of course, this is just more evidence of Mr. Krabs being a purely greedy f who only views jellyfish as commodities and a means by which he can generate a profit. So as SpongeBob ends up hunting more and more jellyfish, Mr. Krabs is seen developing the marketing aspect of their new jellyfish jelly filled Krabby Patty option by painting cute little innocent images of jellyfish roaming freely. This is very similar to the animal product companies today who like to depict the victims of their industry as doing extremely well, when in reality, similar to the jellyfish we will be seeing that will be factory farmed in this episode, these animals are doing terribly and are suffering. So SpongeBob ends up hunting 99% of all the jellyfish in Jellyfish Field to the point where if you look at Jellyfish Field, there's literally no jellyfish to be seen. SpongeBob ends up going home and gets followed by the blue jellyfish that he couldn't capture in the beginning of the episode. The blue jellyfish breaks into his home, which in some sense reminds me of ALF or the Animal Liberation Front and how they used to break into various facilities in order to help animals. But anyway, he ends up capturing SpongeBob in a container that he would normally use to capture a jellyfish. So essentially the hunter became the hunted. SpongeBob while in the container on the way to the factory farm, which the blue jellyfish was aiming to take him to, he ends up saying, what smells like big business? To me, this somewhat alludes to animal agriculture and big business. Once the jellyfish takes SpongeBob to the factory farm that Mr. Krabs is running, 
you can see something kind of interesting, and that is the number two on the front door, indicating there are multiple factory farms, not just this one. Then there are shots of what is going on in the factory farm, and it looks fairly similar to factory farming today, except obviously there are jellyfish, not cows or pigs or chickens. There even is a scene where the jellyfish are shown to be out of jelly, and then they're just tossed in the garbage can, basically dead. This is obviously very similar to what happens with dairy cows or egg laying hens when they are no longer producing eggs or milk at a rate that farmers deem profitable, which leads to their execution. I also find it quite interesting that there isn't any, you know, slaughterhouse workers here or factory farm workers that are sentient or, you know, human or fish in this case, because, you know, the humans in the show are really just fish. They have AI and robots doing it, which is an interesting thing, I'd imagine that it makes more sense to have emotionless robots handling these animals because what they're doing is pretty fucked up and any human with any reasonable amount of emotion is gonna feel empathy toward these jellyfish. So eventually SpongeBob and this jellyfish break in. SpongeBob sees what's happening. He's like, what is going on? This is so terrible. He realizes how messed up all this is. He starts saying things like, you know, these jellyfish deserve fresh air. They deserve to be free and all these kinds of things and he eventually frees all of the jellyfish. The jellyfish get out, obviously, because I just said they're free. I don't know why I even said that. And then they go over to Mr. Krabs and they sting him extremely hard as a means of revenge because he literally like killed a shit ton of their people and then tried making money off of them. And then they end up leaving. And Mr. Krabs says at the end, I'm taking jelly off the menu, which obviously helped this become a very happy ending because no longer were the jellyfish being farmed. So that's the end of the episode. It is very clear that this episode was 100% against factory farming. I can't strongly argue that this episode was also against animal use in general, like, you know, local farms, quote, humane farms and all that, but factory farming 100%. And obviously we know that just because an animal was exploited and killed in an area that is not a factory farm, like a local farm or a humane farm or free range farm, whatever the f they want to call it, it's still unethical to go ahead and exploit and murder these animals for profit. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything I missed. If you haven't seen the episode, I strongly recommend you go ahead and watch it. I'll try to put a link to where you can watch it for free because I know nowadays you kind of need like a streaming uh, platform membership to watch these kinds of things, but I have a couple links I can uh, put out in the uh, description and pinned comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, subscribe if you haven't. Let me know what you think about the beard. Do I look higher test to the meat eating, toxic, overly masculine people that think that vegans are beta males? If you like my work and you wanna support me on Patreon, the link is in my description below and in the pinned comment. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, fuck off, I don't want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak to me again, you're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, 